8.12 in Paris, 7.12 here in London. In 48 hours, France votes in the first round of the presidential elections. The gap is narrowing between the current president, Emmanuel Macron, and his nearest rival, Marine Le Pen, leader of the far-right National Rally. So to here to look ahead to Sunday's poll is Nabila Ramdani, a French-Algerian journalist and broadcaster, and Florence Biedermann joining us on the line from Paris. She's a journalist for AFP. Good morning to you both. Good morning, Emma. Uh, good to have you. Now, let's just uh, get the latest for, in terms of the polls, Florence. Um, who is, where do things stand to this morning? Well, I mean, they stand uh, like they stand some months ago already, which means uh, Emmanuel Macron is still leading the competition, if I may say. Uh, but uh, the phenomenon, as you said, is that uh, the difference with uh, Marine Le Pen is really decreasing and uh, uh, this is kind of a, a worrying and first-time uh, thing that there is su such a narrow uh, margin between uh, the president and an extreme right candidate. And so now uh, the poll would be, I, I don't give an exact figure because, you know, polls vary, but it's about like 26% for Macron and 22 or even sometimes 24% for Le Pen. Nabila, that is a close run race, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I mean, most recent polls, as uh, Florence just said, suggest that Emmanuel Macron will win the first round of the elections, but also the second round. I think the only slight surprise we've had, we have had over the last week or so, is Marine Le Pen of the far right Rassemblement National narrowing the gap with Macron. And one poll suggested that she might win uh, as much as forty-eight percent for the second round against. Um, uh, Mr. Macron. Now, this would not see her win, uh, but with a margin of error, uh, anything is possible. And if she were to win, it would, of course, create a, a, a political earthquake. And remember, this is her third attempt to get into the Elysee Palace. Uh, and she represents a party with less than 10 seats in the French Parliament. So, yes, the French political system is a quirky one. And in this day of Donald Trump and Brexit, anything is possible. But I would still be absolutely astonished if Le Pen was to win over two rounds. That is the issue, isn't it, Florence? That you, you have uh, this arguably very wise system of election in France, that you spend, that your first election that is coming up this Sunday is the opportunity for people to, dare I say it, say how they really feel or what give their real um, views behind closed doors and they have whatever protest vote they need to get out of their system. And by the time you get to the second vote in a few weeks' time, people hold their nose and go for the most pragmatic option. Are we still relying on that system to hold? Uh, yes, because uh, so far nobody wanted to change this presidential system and, and the way the election is done with a majority vote which means uh, that smaller parties maybe have less chances um, and everything is focused on, on the personality of one person who will be the president. Uh, what will most probably happen, I agree with Nabila, is that in the second round, uh, Macron will win. But what will be interesting is uh, the rate of abstention, because it seems this election did not uh, raise a huge interest in the French people. They're already tired of COVID, the war in Ukraine also added to the worry, the anxieties, and uh, it seems uh, the abstention would be very high. But, I mean, if we come to a situation where you have to choose between Macron and Le Pen, definitely, and even if the margin is really decreasing, which is the worrying factor anyway, and which uh, bodes not very well for what happens after the election, and in this case, I still think uh, Macron will uh, will win. Uh, Florence, staying with you, this disillusionment with, with voting in the traditional parliamentary system, I mean, how deeply is it running at the moment? There is a genuine fear, isn't there, that a large proportion of the electorate is simply not going to turn out? Yeah, I mean, even uh, higher than uh, it was ever last time, which was uh, like something like 28% was considered very high. The rate can, can be even higher. And uh, maybe also a factor is that for months, Paul had been suggesting that uh, the runoff would be between Macron and Le Pen. So there was not much suspense on this. And uh, it looks like many people think, oh, well, whatever we vote, the result is always the same. It doesn't change. We have the same candidates than uh, five years ago. Uh, and, and, and that's it. So there is kind of disillusionment. Um, Nabila, you were talking about a narrowing of um, the, the, the vote or the popularity between Marine Le Pen and Emmanuel Macron. 
with Marine Le Pen coming from such a staunchly extreme right point of view, what does that say about the political temperature in France at the moment? Well, I would say that the big difference with previous uh, election campaigns is that this year we have uh, we have seen major candidates from the far right. Um, uh, what you have had in previous year was one far right candidate from the Le Pen family, and they were widely demonised. But what that is happening less and less, and now you uh, there, there's around a third of the country that votes for overtly racist politicians, and the most radical is uh, Eric Zemmour, who has three criminal convictions for spreading racist hate. And his most uh, recent conviction was this year, and it was for suggesting on live television that child immigrants inevitably turn into rapists and murderers. So this level of discourse would quite rightly sound obscene to the vast majority of people. But in France, it is becoming uh, pretty normal. So, you know, uh, this is the difference with previous years. But so far, the election campaigns have largely gone as planned. You have 12 candidates across the political spectrum, and they're all hoping to get through the first round on Sunday. And as I said, they range from Eric Zemmour on the extreme right uh, to the very left-wing Jean-Luc Mélenchon, and there are plenty of others in between. But the only candidates with any serious possibility of success are probably Emmanuel Macron, Marine Le Pen, and at a push, Jean-Luc Mélenchon of the French left. Uh, and if the French left was united, he would walk the election. But it seldom is. It's all about unity, isn't it, um, Florence? And looking ahead to Sunday, I mean, we are likely to use the like, lose the likes of Eric Zemmour. Um, we are likely to use, lose Jean-Luc Mélenchon. But after that, when we have Le Pen and Macron expected to go head to head, will allies suddenly form, alliances suddenly form in the way that, that many expect them to? That will be very interesting to see what uh, the different... Uh, other contenders will uh, will decide and the stand they will take. You know, for example, the traditional classic right, uh, led by uh, Valérie Pécresse, will have to make a choice to support Macron or Le Pen. And uh, a wing of this uh, Parti Républicain is uh, quite close, actually, to, to Marine Le Pen, and another is closer to, to Macron. So let's see what they decide. Also, Mélenchon, at the other extreme, uh, there, his voters may also to decide not maybe to vote for Le Pen, but simply to abstain. So definitely it seems that if we go to this situation, I mean, Macron would win, but not as largely as he did last time where he got 66% of the vote, or even like his predecessor Chirac when he was faced with Marine Le Pen's father years ago, uh, who won with uh, 82%. You know, it was enormous, but this... Uh, there is uh, uh, more and more, let's say, uh, detoxifying of the uh, party of Marine Le Pen and people got used to her and she managed, you know, to present a more moderate face, although her program is the same as before. Uh, so that explains also that uh, there may be not such a large difference between them after the first round, Nabil or the second round, sorry. Nabila, looking at the way that any potential president could govern France, um, you mentioned the fact that we're going, it would be pushing towards a more far right agenda. But what about other events which have been occurring? Namely, the conflict in Ukraine requires a serious politician for serious times. Is there a sense that Marine Le Pen could actually be up to the job were she to be elected? Well, I have to say that French elections are inevitably focused on France itself. But yes, a major event such as the cataclysmic war in, in Ukraine is, of course, focusing attention over the, the election period. Um, I would say this is particularly so because France has played such a high profile role in trying to bring peace to Ukraine for almost a decade, including during the annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, every candidate in this race has been pretty much criticized over his uh, over their links with uh, and, uh, Vladimir Putin. Um, Marine Le Pen has been very close to Putin over the years. She has taken loans from Russian banks to finance her politics. And she spent time in Moscow with Putin. And we all remember the huge table between Mr. Macron and Vladimir Putin. But there was a very small coffee table between Putin and Marine Le Pen when, when they met um, Macron himself. 
uh, he's um, continuing his very close relationship with Vladimir Putin. And some say it's a good idea that the two presidents have been talking day in, day out, but political opponents have naturally used it to attack Macron, saying he should not be fraternizing with an alleged war criminal while trying to end the war in Russia's favor. So on the one hand, Macron's supporters would say this high profile diplomacy has boosted his credibility as a statesman. But on the other hand, opponents would say he's he's grandstanding and he's effectively showing off while ignoring the day-to-day -day concerns of millions of ordinary French citizens. And Eric Zemmour at one stage even suggested that France needed a Putin-type uh, figure. But now all candidates are backtracking a bit and changing the subject when Putin's name uh, comes up. So it's all pretty lukewarm, but it's also a good excuse to avoid world affairs and concentrate on day-to-day -day politics at home. And it's actually working in Le Pen's favor. And there's evidence of French voters who would rather talk about the cost of living than geopolitics. Nabila Ramdani and Florence Biedermann, thank you both for joining me on Monocle 24.